Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to secure empty switch interfaces. So on the surface, it may not seem like a big deal if you have um, a bunch of switch interfaces that are not used. What could go wrong? What, what's the threat there? Well, unfortunately, the defaults of the default configurations on Cisco switches open up some security holes. And so we're going to start off by talking about those defaults and the security holes they introduce. And then we'll go ahead and, and review a couple relatively simple recommended configurations in order to address them. So let's jump onto a switch command line to get started. So we're at the switch command line and let's talk about defaults. So first let's talk about VLAN 1. Show VLAN brief. Here we see all of the configured VLANs on the switch. V, all of these, with the exception of VLAN 20, and ignore that for now, we'll come back to VLAN 20, are VLANs that you cannot delete from the switch. So they come with it when it was factory made. VLAN 1, known as the default VLAN, is a VLAN that every port in on the switch by default is associated to VLAN 1. So all these ports on the right-hand side are in VLAN 1. So that's the first default worth considering. Anybody who walks up to a switch and plugs into it is automatically in the same VLAN as all these other devices. And you know a VLAN is a broadcast domain, so they can talk, they can reach every other device in that VLAN. That's the first security hole, or at least a concern with a default configuration. Now let's go ahead and look at some of the interfaces. So if we issue the show IP interface brief command, we can see all the interfaces here. And in particular, I'm, I'm interested in the status column and the protocol column. What I'm seeing here is all of these are down with the exception of two, but they're down meaning they're not in use. However, they are enabled. By default, every switch port on the switch, every interface, is enabled to work. So when you do walk over and you plug a PC into it, it is enabled. It will come up and it will start working. If we look into some detail on the switch ports, let's enter, enter the command show interface status. So here, it tells us every interface. Here it's called port on the far left side. And we can see the status. Most of these are not connected. Again, we can confirm they're all in VLAN 1 by default. But I'm, I'm interested in these next two columns, the duplex and the speed. Well, by default, interfaces are configured to auto-negotiate with the devices that connect to them. And they auto-negotiate for duplex, so the switch is going to talk to the device and figure out can it support full duplex or half duplex, and it will go ahead and negotiate, and it'll configure itself to match the other side, and it'll do the same thing for speed. And in fact, we have an example here, FA011 is connected, and the A-full and the A-100 means it's configured for auto negotiation and then that's what the A means and then the full tells you what it negotiated to. So in this case it negotiated to full duplex and 100 megabits per second for the speed. So what this means is this default configuration is working to um, enable the device to communicate properly to the switch. So in many ways the switch is kinda like plug and play. You can walk up to it, put, the, put a PC on there and with all these defaults, you're going to be off and running in no time. There's one more default I want to talk about, and that is VLAN trunking. We save trunking for other more advanced VLAN tutorials. Check them out when you can. But basically what you should know is that every port, by default, is configured to negotiate with the connected device and determine if that device wants to become a trunk or not. Now, a trunk sees traffic from every single VLAN on the switch. So somebody had a malicious intention and negotiated uh, to becoming a trunk port, even though they're not another switch on our network, uh, the switch, our switch here, would successfully try to negotiate and become a trunk port. If that happened, then that trunk port will send all traffic from all VLANs over it. So whatever's connected on the other side, like somebody's computer capturing all that traffic, they could see all the traffic on the switch. It's a major security hole. Well, what can we do about this? There are a couple actions we can take. 
The first one, and the easiest one, is to simply disable these interfaces. So if we're not using them, let's shut them down. So how do we do that? Well, let's go into configuration mode, and let's just choose one interface. We'll go into interface fast ethernet 017, and the command we want to issue is shutdown. Once we do that, let's exit configuration mode, and let's go back to our interface brief command, and now you can see FA017 is administratively down in the status columns. So that means it's disabled. If you plug into it, it's not going to work. Well, that's great as long as you go ahead and you remember and your colleagues remember to shut down the interfaces. But what if you don't? Well, let's go back and take a look at our VLANs on the switch. And let's talk now about VLAN 20. I named it bogus because it's not a real VLAN. This is a VLAN that we're going to put, we're going to assign unused interfaces to this VLAN. So if somebody does plug into it and, and, the, and the port is enabled so no one shut it down, it'll come up and it'll work, but that person will be restricted to this bogus VLAN. And the VLAN won't go anywhere. If anything, they can only talk to other unauthorized people who, talk, who plugged into the switch. So it's kind of a sneaky move. You know, you're creating this bogus VLAN, and it's a dead end. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and go back into interface Fast Ethernet 017. And first, we want to go ahead and assign it to the VLAN. So the command is switch port access VLAN, and if you question mark that, you're prompted to enter a VLAN ID. So the number we want to enter is 20, and now that interface is associated with VLAN 20. We can go ahead and check out the show interface status command now, and you see here two things. For FA017, the status is disabled, which is great, and even if it weren't disabled, it's now in VLAN 20. There's another thing we want to do, and that's to address the default configuration for VLAN trunking negotiation. Well, we put the um, the switch port FA017 into VLAN 20, but let's go ahead and actually assign it statically to be an access port and not a trunking port. So how do we do that? Well, we go back into configuration mode, and we jump into FA17, and here we issue the command switch port mode access. And once we do that, that port is no longer capable of negotiating a trunk with whatever's connected to it. And so now we've eliminated that security concern for this particular port. So you would want to do this to all of the unused ports on a switch. It's a little time consuming, but it's very good practice to uh, implement and to keep. It is a few steps you can take to securing unused switch ports. And that's it. That's everything. So to summarize everything we covered, we know there are a bunch of defaults which raise some concerns. First, all ports are in VLAN 1. And second is auto negotiation, not only for the speed and duplex, but for possible trunking. The configurations we can take to address some of these concerns are we can shut down the interface. That's great. No one can use it. And we can also take another few steps. We can go ahead and disable the auto negotiation for trunking by using the switch port mode access command. And we can also assign the port to a bogus VLAN. And we would do that by issuing the switch port access VLAN and then enter the ID of the bogus VLAN right there. And that's it. That is how to secure empty switch interfaces. Thanks for watching.